<clears throat> hey everyone, 8 Bishop here. Today we're doing a deck tech on a anti-meta deck. Uh, so this is just trying to be as disruptive as possible to all of the most powerful combos and archetypes out there, um, most notably being Dinos and Nova. Occasionally you'll still go up against like an on-reveal deck, um, or you will be if you're lower on the ladder, um, and we kind of have answers to all of that stuff. So we're running Armor to prevent destruction effects, Cosmo to prevent on-reveal effects, and Enchantress to turn off ongoing effects. Uh, we do also have our own singular ongoing effect booster because we have a handful of one-drop units in the deck, and it can be quite useful for that reason. Um, so let's just go over the list really quickly. Um, we're running Iceman for disruption, Quark for disruption, Nightcrawler, good flexible one-drop, Blade, very notably because we're playing um, Strong Guy. Strong Guy, we can almost always have our hand empty. We only have two cards in our deck that we cannot play on curve on turn six together, but if we have a Blade, then we can always discard one of those. Um, ideally, we only draw one of our four drops, or we draw our four drops staggered enough that that won't be an issue, though. Um, with a four drop plus two drop or one drop is still okay. Um, we're playing Cloak. Uh, because it's a very aggressively statted unit and we are able to use it to move around our stuff that counters our opponent's stuff, um, which could be quite rude to them. Um, Bishop, because it gets stats really efficiently and we can play our deck a little bit more slowly um, if and when we need to. And yeah, that's the deck. Um, you'll see you do need to play it a little bit more controlling style um, depending on what you draw. If you wind up drawing a lot of your cards that turn off on reveal effects or destruction. You need to play more reactively instead of um, just playing tempo. Obviously locations make a huge difference too, like cloning vats is a, uh, a big deal. <laughs> it's gonna make it to where if we're playing a bunch of stuff on that, then our, uh, our strong guy probably isn't doing a ton. Let's go ahead and just get ourselves an extra Angela though. That seems pretty good. Do a double Angela, uh, Angela double Bishop game by the looks of it. And that gives us some pretty good tempo plays at least. Do okay, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna set up this bishop over on Shadowland and then um Next turn, we'll do like Angela plus Cosmo or Armor. It doesn't look like they're playing the normal combo deck anyway. They're playing um they're playing the movement deck. They have a lot of stats to play around though. I'm thinking that what we're going to want to do here, actually, is um, let's get a Cosmo down there, get another Cosmo into hand, and then use that Cosmo. Make it very awkward for them to, um, to get the rest of their movement effects off. Oh, perfect, and they Cosmo there? I'll take it, because I don't need my on-reveal effects. They shouldn't be able to move anything for the rest of the game, basically, because of this. They get one chance right now, and then they're done. Like, I can deal with my effects not going off. That's not a big deal. I 
mean, that's a really aggressively styled unit, so I think we do do it like this, actually. The board is already very cluttered for a deck that wants to move its stuff around, so I don't think they're going to be able to come back on this. Smart. They have a, a big six power cloak to play next turn. So good to know. That's the highest power we can get there. Yeah, um, I'm feeling confident enough to snap that, actually. Yeah, that's what I thought. Not bad for an opening hand. Okay, there's my two cost. Okay, at least have a play to make. There is a world where I should have sat on that nightcrawler for a bishop, but that's okay. Interesting. I don't think I want that yet. Also interesting that's not an on reveal effect. Huh. They aren't playing the normal strategy here. I think we do this for now. So Nova will not work here, and then we'll set up Cosmo here next turn in case they're saying about on reveal strategy. Oh, gross. They, they're playing some type of Zero abuse. Yikes, okay. Is what that is what it is. I'm just gonna have to go for a more aggressive play to try to keep strong guy in line. I think if we're doing that, it's more correct to support another spot though. Because strong guy keeps them on their toes. Okay, so strong guy cannot possibly go off in full. We know that, but they don't know that. Let's try it like this. Because we hit discard, strong guy still goes off. So we can hit blade with lockjaw, hypothetically. Yeah, okay. It's a 50-50 who flips first here. So if they are going for an Odin play right now, 
uh, there's a 50% chance that the Cosmo stops it. Oh, I misunderstood what that does. Lockjaw sets up your other cards to swap. Oh! I think I would have lost to the Odin stats anyway, so that's not a big deal, but... Got it. That's good to know. We're probably feeling pretty good about swapping hands right now. Yeah, that's fine. Um, that's a one cost. I think we just want to deny them cards. Good to know. Good to know. Funny enough, I think we don't want to hit the Iceman. I think we just want to discard it. Preventing our opponent from getting it and from us having to deal with a higher cost hand. Okay, well you don't have a hand anymore, so I'm not super worried about that. Paints plus one power, plus one power, so that doesn't actually matter. I'll snap this. I don't think they can win it with what, with what I gave them. <clears throat> yep, that's what I thought. Cool. Nice early curve. Ooh, and um, we get some extra disruption. Let's go for the double Korg, and then we'll go for the double Iceman. They show me a second good location I'm snapping on the spot. Uh, I don't mind that. We're snapping.
We have a huge advantage here. So we got put two rocks in their deck. We're going to increase the cost of something in their hand twice. Like, I'll take it. Come on. Let's go. I hope I hit, like, Dino and Moon Girl or something. That'd be freaking awesome. Oh, yeah. See, that's not a big deal for us at all. Um, we'll get the strong guy down first. I don't think they're setting up a Nova yet, even if they have it. And now that we know we're not going to be swapping hands with them or anything unless the Scarlet Wish comes down, I'm pretty confident that we have this game. We're going to want to be playing our four drops on curve in case we keep drawing expensive cards, but aside from that, we're pretty set. Nice. Little tricky here, actually. I actually probably should have moved the Nightcrawler and played the strong guy here when I um, played the strong guy, but I think I played this before I knew it was a space throw. No, no, I didn't. I did not. Yeah, I guess I, hindsight, I should have made sure the strong guy was here. It was my best bet for winning it, but that's okay. Interesting. They must not have had Nova and decided to not try to play for the Nova. Which is a decision to be made, I guess. There's still a world I can't empty this hand. This gives me flexibility, though. Yeah, I just can't get it completely emptied. Um, I think what we do is this. This so I'm going to lose there anyway. Turn off on reveal effects potentially. Just want to lose by less, though, right? Yeah, okay. There's a world I should have moved the bishop over and then just played something to here because they might throw it. But they didn't throw it at all. They played an America Chavez to it. Yeah. Oops, I did not play that one very well. Part of the problem was I uh, didn't play her on curve. I should have. 
kept my strong guy valid. I think that was enough games, so we're going to stop recording. Thanks for stopping.